rays from a lens are converging towards the point P as shown in the figure. Now see the figure. We can see some rays which are refracted from this awesome lens. They seem to converge at point P. They appear to converge at point P. But we place a glass slab and something entirely different is going to happen. So how much thick glass plate having refractive index 1.6 must be located between the lens and point P so that the image will be formed at P dash. So we have to tell the thickness of this glass slab so that instead of point P, the image is formed at a new point. The image is now formed at a point P dash. And you can see the distance between P and P dash is given to be 0.3 centimeter. So we want to shift the image by 0.3 centimeter and what must be the thickness of our glass slab? This is the question. Got the question? Yes. Now, first of all, let's try to understand why there is a shift in the image. So I will try to explain that first. Suppose we have a ray, awesome ray going like this. Another ray, another ray is at some angle and we can see this ray goes like this and they seem to meet at this point. We will call this point our image I. Now, what if I place a glass slab or some uh, or some slab of some material. So this is our slab of let's say thickness T. Good, good. Now what will happen? Now we will see some refractions. So the ray of light will bend towards the normal at this point and then it will bend away from the normal. Cool. So we can see the image is formed at some other point. This is some other point. This is I dash. Got it? Got it. This is how the image is shifting. Let's say the shift is X. This is the shift. Now, can we find the shift? Well, yes. There was an interesting relationship between this shift and the thickness of our glass slab. Let's say the uh, refractive index is mu. So we can say x is equals to t times 1 minus 1 by mu. This is how we calculate the shift. Okay? Okay. What if there are multiple glass slab? Well, for each slab, we will write such a formula and then we will add up all the shift so that we can get the total shift. Okay? Cool. Now let's proceed. So in our question, we can see the refractive index was given to be 1.6. This was the refractive index of this glass plate. Now, let's find the shift. What was the formula? The formula was normal shift is equals to T times in brackets we have 1 minus 1 by mu. Now, do we know the normal shift? Yes, we do know. It is 0 0.3 centimeter. So, let me just write 0 0.3 centimeter over here. And then we have T times 1 minus 1 by mu. What is mu? Mu is 1.6. So we have 1.6 over here. Cool? Yes. Now this thing can be written as 0 0.3 is equals to T times. Now uh, when we see this, we can just say that uh, this is 1 minus, uh, we have 10 divided by 16. 10 by 16 is nothing but 5 by 8. So this is 5 by 8. Okay. So we can see 0 0.3 is equals to t times 3 by 8 and now we get t is equals to 0 0.8. This is the thickness of our glass plate. Got it? Got it. Now let's see the options and we can find option A to be the right answer for our question. The focal length of thin convex lens is 30 centimeter. So we can see this is our converging lens. The focal length is given to be 30 centimeter, right? At a distance of 10 centimeter from the lens, there is a plane refracting surface of refractive index 3 by 2. So we can see this awesome surface. This is at a distance of 10 centimeter from this lens. Now you can guess what is going to happen. 
Now, where will the parallel rays incident on the lens will actually converge? This is the question. So, these are the parallel rays of light which are incident on the lens and we can see that they have tendency to converge at the focus. So, if there was no other refracting surface, then these rays would have converged at the focus itself, right? right. But there is some refracting surface. So, what will actually happen? These rays will go like this. They will incident on the surface and then they will suffer some refraction. They will bend towards the normal. So, this is the bending and we can see they now converge at some different location. Okay? Yes. So, we have to find this new location. Find this new location at which these rays will converge. And we can see the options. These are the options. Okay? Got it. Now, let me remind you of an important concept. The concept is very simple. Suppose there is a water tank and there is some ruler on the, uh, on the bottom of this water tank. Okay? Okay. Now, suppose you look from the top. You see this ruler from the top. You would be able to see the image of this ruler. And the image is at some different depth. The original depth of that ruler was let's say D. The depth of the image is let's say D dash. Now, if we consider only paraxial rays, then we can say that D dash is related to D. It is nothing but D divided by mu. Mu is the refractive index of this medium. Outside we have air. So, we have the formula D dash is equals to D by mu. So, you can see the smaller distance is D dash and the larger distance was D. So, this is the relation between these two depths. Okay? Okay. Now, Let's relate this to solve our question. So, what was our question? We can see these are the parallel rays of light and they have tendency to converge at focus itself. And we know the focal length. Focal length was already given in the question. Focal length was given to be about uh, uh, 30 centimeter. Okay? Okay. So, these rays would have converged and if we talk about the distance from the surface, we can see that this distance would have been 20 centimeter. But, you know, some refraction will happen. So, due to this refraction, the rays will converge at some different location. So, this is the new location at which the rays will actually converge. Now, we have to find this distance the point at which the rays will converge. Actually, we have to find the distance from the lens. But if we are able to find the distance from the surface, then we can just add 10 to it and we will get the distance from the lens. That's so cool. So first of all, let's find the distance from the surface itself. Now, can we find this distance? Yes. How to do that? Well, remember, you remember something that uh, D dash is D by mu. The smaller distance is equals to the larger distance divided by mu. Okay? Okay. So, let's apply the same thing. So, here the smaller distance is 20 centimeter. And the larger distance, let's say x. So, what is the relation? Smaller distance 20 is equals to the larger distance x divided by mu. What was mu? Mu was 3 by 2. So, let me write 3 by 2 over here. So, you got the value of x and you can see x is coming out to be 30 centimeter. Oh, so this distance is 30 centimeter and we can just add 10 to it. So the total distance is 10 centimeter plus 30 centimeter that is 40 centimeter from this lens. This is 40 centimeter. So 40 centimeter is the right answer for our question and we can just go and mark option D at a distance of 40 centimeter from the lens, the rays will actually converge. Option D is the right answer for this question. A source of light is located at double focal length distance from the convergent lens. 
as I'm reading the question, let's try to visualize it. Let me remove the option. So this is our convergent lens. I hope we can see that. Okay. Now, where is our object? Our object is at a distance of uh, 2f, double focal length. So let me draw the principal axis and you can imagine our object to be at a distance of 2f from the lens. So this distance is 2f. Now, when the object is at a distance of 2f, the image is also formed at a distance of 2f when we have the case of convergent lens. So we can visualize where will be the image of this object. Image will also be at a distance of 2f but on the other side. So we will get a real image of this real object. This is our object. Let's call it O and we can see some rays emerging from the object. This is one ray which appears like this. It passes through the optical center and we can see it is meeting the image. Okay. And we can imagine some other ray also. This is another ray which passes through the lens and after refraction it goes like this. Okay. Nice. Now the question says the focal length of the lens is given to be 30 centimeter. That's nice. At what distance from the lens should a flat mirror be placed such that the rays reflected from the mirror become parallel to the principal axis after passing through the lens for the second time. Wow! This means that we have to place a mirror. Let me choose some other color. Let me choose a blue color. Yes. So this is our mirror. So we have to find what is the distance between this mirror and our lens. What is this distance D? This is the question. And we have to place the mirror in such a style that the ray after getting reflected from the mirror will pass through the lens and it will become parallel to the principal axis. So finally, after passing through the lens, we want this ray to become parallel to the principal axis. What is the distance at which we should place this plane mirror? This is the question. Got the question? Yes. Now, the concept to solve this question is very, very simple. What is the concept? The concept is when we have our object at focus, the rays after getting refracted from a lens such as this will become parallel to the principal axis. If our object is at focus, then the rays emerging from the focus will become parallel to the principal axis after getting refracted from this lens. This is the concept. Okay, okay, okay. So our reflected light from the mirror must pass through focus. So now, now the question is very, very simple. We have to make this reflected light to pass through focus. Now, let's see where is our object. For the reflection from the plane mirror, let's consider this to be our virtual object. We can see that the light rays are appearing to converge at this point. So, these are the incident light rays. They are appearing to converge at virtual object. Okay? Okay. Now, on the other side, we will get a real image. So, this would be our real image of the virtual object. Okay? So, let me call this as real image. And this was our virtual object. Okay? Okay. Now, the concept is for plane mirrors, object distance is equals to image distance. Do you remember that? Yes. So, this means that uh, this distance, this distance must be equal to this distance, right? Right. Now, we know something else also. We know that focus is at a distance of f from the lens. We know that. So, what do you think is distance between our real image and virtual object? What is this distance? Well, this is simple. This is 2f minus f. This is nothing but f. So, this distance is f. This means if object distance is equals to image distance, 
this distance should be f by 2 and this distance should be f by 2. Okay? Okay. Now, did you get the distance d? Can you tell me what is this distance d? Yes, d. This distance d is nothing but f plus f by 2. So, d is f plus f by 2. This is nothing but 3f by 2. Let's just place the value of f. f was given to be 30 centimeter. So, this distance comes out to be 3 times 30 divided by 2. 90 by 2 is 45. So, we got our distance. d is equals to 45. Now, let's see the options. And we can see that option A, 45 centimeter from lens on opposite side of object, this option A is the right answer for our question. A concave lens forms the image of an object such that the distance between the object and the image is 10 cm and the magnification produced is 1 by 4. The focal length of the lens will be. So, we have to tell the focal length of a concave lens. And what is happening? Our concave lens is producing an image. The magnification is given to be 1 by 4. And you can see our virtual image is actually smaller in size than the size of the object. Okay? Okay. So, this is the magnification. Magnification is given to be 1 by 4. And we have to tell the focal length. So, we have to find out what is the focal length of this lens. Now, do we remember the formula of magnification? In cases of lens, what is the formula of magnification? Magnification is equal to V by U. Correct. Now, if you tell me this formula, let's assume something. Let's say that image is at a distance x from this lens. So, V is nothing but minus x. We take minus because the direction of incident light rays is taken as positive and the opposite direction is taken as negative. Therefore, our image is formed on the negative side. That's why we are writing v is equals to minus x. And let's say our object is at some distance from the lens. Can we find this distance in terms of x? Yes. So, let me use the formula. Magnification is equals to v by u. Magnification is given to be 1 by 4. And what is V? V, I wrote it to be minus X. So, what is U? U is nothing but minus 4X. Okay. So, our object is at a distance of 4X from this lens. Our object is also on negative side. Correct. Now, the distance between object and image. This distance was given in the question. This distance was 10 centimeter. Given in the question. And we can see this is nothing but 4x minus x. This is 3x. So, 3x is 10. 3x is equal to 10 centimeter. x is equal to 10 by 3. Okay. Now, we know what is the value of v. v is equal to minus x. This becomes minus 10 by 3. And what is u? u is minus 4x. This becomes minus 40 by 3. Now, we know what is V, we know what is U. Can we find what is F? Yes, we will apply the lens formula. Tell me, what is our lens formula? You will say lens formula, that's so easy. Lens formula is 1 by V minus 1 by U is equals to 1 by F. Correct? Let's apply this formula. So, let me place some values. So, 1 by V. So, this becomes minus 3 by 10. Minus 1 by U. What is 1 by U? 1 by u is minus uh, 3 by 40. So, minus minus becomes plus 3 by 40. Okay. This is equal to 1 by f. Now, from this, you can see what are we getting? Uh, we are getting f to be about uh, uh, 40 divided by, uh, divided by, uh, we have 4, 3 is 12 and minus 12 plus 3, this becomes minus 9. Okay, so we are getting minus 40 by 9. Now, this means this is nothing but uh, minus 4.44, something like that. So, this is our focal length. So, our focus is obviously on negative side 
and our focus is at a distance of uh, focus is at a distance of 4.4 centimeter from this lens so this is our focus okay okay 4.4 hmm now let's see the options and we can see that option d 4.4 centimeter is the right answer for this question a luminous object is placed at a distance of 30 centimeter from a convex lens of focal length 20 centimeter now let's imagine a convex lens so this is a convex lens so beautiful now at a distance of 30 centimeter from this lens we have a luminous bright object so this is our object shining brightly now the distance between the object and the mirror is given to be 30 centimeter cool the question says the focal length is 20 centimeter so you can imagine the focus would be somewhere over here 20 centimeter from the lens so we know f is equals to 20 centimeter now the object is beyond focus so this means that we will get a real image of this object you can imagine the light rays emerging from this object and after refraction they will go and meet the principal axis somewhere over here we will get a real image okay yes so we can see these light rays awesome now the question says that uh, on the other side of the lens at what distance from the lens a convex mirror of radius of curvature 10 centimeter be placed in order to have an upright image of the object coincident with it i will explain see we have to use a convex mirror this is how convex mirrors look like now the radius of curvature of this convex mirror is given it is 10 centimeter okay yes now we have to place this convex mirror on the other side so we have to place this convex mirror uh, you can imagine the convex mirror to be somewhere over here okay yes this is our convex mirror and we have to place this convex mirror so that our final image is coincident with the original object itself so where must we have the final image our final image should be at the location of object itself so this was the location of the object and this indeed is the location of the final image now you can see if our final image is over here our final light rays should meet at this point right right now if these light rays are meeting at this point this means the light rays have retraced their path if the object and image are at same position this means that in this case our light rays must have retraced its path after getting reflected from this mirror so you can imagine these light rays were going to touch the mirror and after they touch the mirror they get reflected back so that they retrace their path and once they retrace their path they will pass through the lens and again they will undergo refraction and again they will retrace their path and finally they go and arrive at the same location from which they were uh, emerging out of the object okay okay so this is what is happening if the light ray have to retrace its path it should fall perpendicular to the surface of the mirror this means that this angle must be 90 degree if the light rays fall perpendicular to the mirror then they can retrace their path okay okay so simple so this means if our final image was somewhere over here we can say this is v this would have been v but we have placed the mirror and our light rays are perpendicular to the mirror now if the light rays are normal to the mirror we know that if we extend these light rays they will pass through the center of curvature because all the normals to the mirror pass through the center of curvature of the mirror right right so this center of curvature of the mirror is at a distance of 10 centimeter from the mirror 
This was given in the question. Radius of curvature was 10 centimeter. Okay, okay. So we had to find the distance between the distance between the uh, mirror and lens. What is this distance d? So this is very easy to find. How? We will first of all calculate the value of v, and then we will subtract 10 from it. Then we will get distance d. So d is nothing but v minus 10. This is how we are going to obtain d. Now, let me give you the key concept first. So the key concept to solve this question is this. For the image to coincide with the object, light ray must retrace its path after getting reflected from the convex mirror. Then only we can see our final image to coincide with the object itself. Okay? Okay. So this was the key concept to solve this question. Now let's return. We have to find V in order to solve this question. How to find V? Well, we can apply the famous formula, the lens formula. Do you remember the lens formula? Yes, we do. What is the formula? 1 by V minus 1 by U is equals to 1 by F. Awesome. Now, I will tell you a cool way to remember this formula. The most coolest way to remember this formula is like this. V is equals to uf divided by u minus f. u plus f. Okay? So the formula is V is equals to uf divided by u plus f. Just remember this formula. This is so cool. Now, let's place the values and let's get the answer. So we take the direction of the incident light rays to be positive direction and the opposite direction will be negative direction. So we can see our object was on the negative side. That's why u will be minus 30. Okay, negative sign because the object is on negative side. Now focus is always positive for these converging lengths. So f is equals to plus 20. Now let's place the values. So we are getting v is equals to uh, minus 30 times uh, plus 20 divided by minus 30 plus 20. Okay. So what is V? V is coming out to be minus 600 divided by uh, divided by minus 10. Minus cancels out, 1, 0 cancels out and we get V is equals to plus 60. So what is V? V is equals to 60. And we know the radius of curvature. This was given to be 10. So 60 minus 10 is the required distance. This is 50. This distance is 50. Okay. So let's see the options. We can see that option A, 50 centimeter is the distance between the lens and the mirror. So 50 centimeter option A is the right answer for our question.